<laughs> Hello, world. Jim. <laughs> Hello, world. My name is Tim Ruswick. And I'm Rick Davidson. And we're playing a game called Hue. We're going to talk about what makes it work. You ready for this? Ready, ready, and raring. Okay, I'm going to restart level so everybody can see because this game has a cold open. So it's recommended that it plays with the controller, so that's what I'm doing. Movement feels good. I'm that's jumping cool around. So far, yeah. Okay, platformer. Envelope. I got an email. Nothing I... to do except for run left to right. Clear. Oh, Dearest I've you. Oh, I've had the most dreadful luck. I feel terrible that you've, <laughs> been, left alone that you've been left alone all this time. Traitorous okay, doctor traitorous doctor. Oh, yeah. So, if you're into story, cool, there's story, but you're not stuck. You can still move and play. I like that a lot because we've already established I'm not much of a story guy. I'm like, I want to jump and bounce and shoot and all that kind of stuff. So, if you're into yeah, story, this is the best of both worlds. I think. There's a voiceover in the game too, so it works. But if you like the Rick version, <laughs> you got that. Oh, was I reading it? Yeah, and once again, I can't hear the audio for viewers at home. Why is Rick reading the stuff that we can read? Shut up, Rick. I'm trying to Someone listen to this. to make a mod so we can have the rig. Can you do my GPS navigation stuff too? That'd be great. This, this is a little long, it feels, like this whole, you know, yeah. uh, uh, platform. I think you needed to have done some stuff before now. It's good that you can do stuff while the story is going along, but less, I think they could have done that story in probably half the content, personally. Mechanically wise, that was not super interesting but like if i cared about the story like okay i could be like understanding the world yeah. that was just running and jumping and i feel like everybody knows how to do that at this point but that, that's a good takeaway so far like good lesson for a platform creator or any sort of game creator is let people play the game and listen to the story don't force them to just sit there and watch the cutscene because then they'll skip it yeah let's see oh this is zoomed in i like this amount of of zoom and the world's very black and white. I haven't seen this game, but I'm, I'm guessing you're turning the world from black and white to color. It looks cool. I it's like it. It's got a, you know, this is like a really dark and gloomy b background, but it's got the music that's playing in the background is like this piano, like lighthearted, like mm. almost like happy kind of deal. Um, okay. I like how this look, I really like this aesthetic though. Mm. Oh, and then first bit of color. That's cool. That's good punch. Hello. Hello. Hugh, is that you? Thank goodness I've been trapped for days. Well, we're gonna we're gonna help you out. Yeah, I have a feeling this game wants me to help him out. Okay. Um. Okay. Wrong button. Did he tell me to press? Okay, the so you don't. Did I miss that? Have to <laughs> dig it. I wonder if there's some sort of clever. So here's here's a good puzzle, good challenge. We know intuitively we've got to help this guy out. We know we've got to get past the rocks. But it doesn't say push the X button to break the rocks. I, right. I like that. Treat your player like they're smart. Yeah. And then we'll see how long before Tim we, rage quits. We and may be the controller. controller. <laughs> how do I get past you? Based on how I did with gunpoint, I think <laughs> it, may, <laughs> it may take a bit. Um, you nailed it. You nailed ape out though. Awesome. <laughs> well, that was my our kind video, of game. Our ape out video. Tim was nailing it. You so run well. at people and you hit one button to smash them against a the wall. That's I can handle that. You not so good. Okay. okay. So how do we feel about this gameplay moment? I I'm starting to get a bit frustrated watching you just sort of do the exact same thing five times in a row. Yeah. Just uh, bounce into the rocks. I'm guessing you're trying all the different buttons to I, figure something yep, out. I ran at it. I jumped. I pressed everything, which is what I normally do. And we'll see if there's any clues on the screen. There's nothing. There's two weird guys and their names under them. That's all I can see. There's so, a miner. What's going through up. my head is I was kind of jumping through uh, what he was saying to me. I'm wondering if I missed yeah. something right uh, now. So yeah, like well, I, I'm you, actually going to the, like blaming myself first. Like, oh, did I yeah. did I say something too quick or? What did I do? Or like, um, did I miss something back here? I think this is more likely that you have to go backwards. Although this is a long going backwards. This is a bit too far. Maybe the well. Yeah. If like there was a, a little. Here. Oh, you could go the left. Oh, there's other spots. There's paint. So it could just be. Pick a tool or something. No. I think you can go left, and there's something else that way. Okay. So the, yeah, like the world has shown me like, hey, there's other stuff here, right? Yeah. Like it could be one of those things again if you like figuring things out then you'll be so happy that the game didn't say hey go and find the magic crow and get the magic pickaxe because now we're sitting there saying 
what do, what do we do? You're going to feel smart when you figure this out. Yeah, so the first time I went through here, I missed all this, but the fact that, that it blocked my way made me go back and say, oh, there's like, there's other stuff. There's a boat. Like, I didn't yeah. see any of this, so. That water looks really cool. Oh. Okay. Glimpse of something. Sorry. Something Are unusual. You? Down Are past you? the lighthouse. Okay. Okay. We're being enticed by these little bits of color. Like, I find that interesting. Yeah. That's yeah. Um, okay, so what's this? Ah, so I got my blue hue, I think. He was so blue. Do, do. Okay, that looks like you've now got a thing you can do. Oh, oh, that's cool. That's world. a nice little reveal. I like it. Pointed to the sky now bits of the world of blue. blue. It is this shared vision, this shared unquestioned vision. understanding which can So my, my first thoughts are, uh, yeah, I really like how it's really been painted blue. blue. You've brought some colour back to the world, that's clear. I know what I'm doing, my Perhaps purpose is to bring colour to the world, or at least it seems gray that gray. way. Um, Perhaps everyone but in this world sees what I'm taking out of this game so far is that it's a platformer, the basic no, mechanics, no. jump, run, etc. aren't different to other platformers. But just with this one thing of having the world black and white and then bring a bit of color to it it feels fresh and different and interesting yeah so they've clearly invested their time into this one feature and not worried about all the other features so far okay so when i turn the black round, background blue well it was a black round now it's a now it's a blue ground <laughs> uh i can walk through it i think they just disappeared I just, don't know who, cares? who cares i'm saved thank you okay so i i really like so what at first I thought was like maybe a problem with the game or a problem with me forced me to backtrack and then it made me explore a little bit and then it gave me that feeling of discovery where now I got a new power and now I can like understand the basics of the game. I actually that went from like a uh, maybe not so great moment to a really cool moment I think. Mm. That's an interesting one from a game design point of view. I. I felt that moment was a bit frustrating. Like if you'd run to the left, you would have never had that moment. So half of the people, well, most people are going to run right because that's what you do in a platform. You right. run from left to right. So I'd say 90% of people would have run to the right. Uh, so the there's a little bit of frustration there. I think I would have liked a little bit more indication that when you get blocked, you need to go somewhere else. But you know not too bad yeah too bad. It, it, that's I, gonna be a personal personal sort of thing i think it's really important in these first couple of moments too because the game is the game is training you how to react to it right and what i think that told me is um i gotta look around a little bit right like i may like had the answer been right there later on when i encounter a problem i might expect that same sort of like solution yeah. you know hand holding okay yeah yeah, yeah got it Okay, so here's another example. Oh, I can't jump to get up there. And the game's are oh, the game's already taught us. If you're going to black and white mode, maybe you can put down a... Can I go? I don't know if I can go black. I have to hold. Once you go black though, Tim, <laughs> you're never going to be back. <laughs> I I'm that well, I can't go out what of we're doing blue. Here, but okay. Once you go blue, you've, okay. you've done through and through. Is there a reset button? Because it turned. What it, well, last time it told us if you can't do it, keep going. So let's let's put that theory to the test. Right. Okay. Yeah, there's another path. So I assume this game so far has taught me to look around a little bit. Which yeah, that's how I. But options it. like the I bang on about having two to five choices for the player. In that moment there, you've got a choice of keep persisting or move forward. I like that. I, I like the idea that it didn't say there's one way to go. Stay here and figure it out. Right. Cool, I'll keep that. I'll right. See what happens if I run all the way to the end. And this is this is kind of shown, like I said, that, that that it's that kind of game, which is cool. Okay, so maybe the world yeah. starts this way, and then once I change it, I can't. Unless I have another yeah. color. Let me see. Hello. There. Is there voiceover going at the moment? Are there's no voiceovers for the the, the chats, but there's voiceovers okay. uh, for the like the the ones on the bottom. Okay. Don't play too close to the water now. All right. Okay. I bet you Oh no, you didn't. I wasn't. Okay, so here you can get rid of that blue. That blue By changing to ball. Yeah. yeah. Gotta go through. Yeah. But I can't. Okay. <laughs> I think I have to have another color to replace it with, which I think I might get soon. Okay, and then you're gonna fall. Whoa! Nice. No fall damage. Okay, that's cool. Learning the game. 
and then that's tortoise we can go to the left oh you have to be close enough to it do you yeah hold x hold okay hold, new feature so again pretty standard block moving platforming mechanism. this is something i want to so d no oh uh so it only showed okay. once that prompt only showed once right the x to pull yeah I was just checking because another thing that I've started to realize in games is like it's really cool when games show you the keyboard controls or whatever input method you're using, you know, mm -hmm. versus like yeah. just a generic one. Right. So it knows you're using a controller rather than saying push, you know, right. X on you or A on the keyboard. It's on the controller. Okay. All right. Nothing too crazy yet. Oh, this is interesting. So I got boulders ahead. Rocks are gonna fall. So you're gonna move that wooden crate out of the way. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happens when you. Everyone die. at home watching was like, Tim, don't do it. <laughs> well, I tried it because I can go slow mo. I didn't. No. Oh, oh, oh okay, okay. Pull, pull the crate towards you. My brain, my brain is doing this backwards. I'm thinking I have to switch, to blue, but I can walk on blue. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. All right. Always blue, always blue. Oh yeah, there you go. And then, oh. can I crouch? Or I can go. And then, oh okay, I get, okay. And then you could. No, I think you pull that back towards the wall. Okay. Yeah. And then jumpy jump. Nice. Okay, so this is like a puzzly type of exploration kind of game, ish. Make it all blue. You might have to jump and make it blue. Oh no, I can say mid air. That's a lovely background. I like the... It's not just a solid blue wall. Oh, and little parallax action as you move it. Too. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So a good note for developers out there, when you're doing a background in a color game, you don't have to just have it as solid blue. Even better than that, give it some, some life. Make it interesting. Because the color is the star of the show in this game, I think. Yeah. The character is just sort of there to, to be the... the the support for the color, but it seems all about the colors. So when you do change color, make sure it's a good moment. Can you go, you're gonna get bolded. Can you go left of the water? I don't know if I can make that. Okay, no, don't do it, Tim. I think you have to go left of the dragon head. Uh, I don't think they put that boulder and then jump on the boulder. A little bit of nice physics, good. This oh, is yeah. terrifying. That's cool. That's cool. Pull that, jump down there. So far, they're fairly... They're fairly good puzzles. They're not super complex. There's not a lot of sitting I, there getting stuck. I feel like they are perfect for, like, flow state. Like, they're ju they're incrementing mm. just enough to kind of keep me interested. Yep. Um, which is good. Okay, so this one... Right. Uh, Oh, when it hits oh, me. Oh, like okay. Insta-death with the boulders. It's fine. You just got to run down to that ladder. So now it's going to chase me. That's interesting. Oh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Blue. <laughs> Don't laugh. Oh, and then oh. they put spikes at the <laughs> bottom. That's something I would do as a masochistic like, does, level though. designer in Final Phobia. But my game is based in hell, so it makes sense that in my game I can... <laughs> So, as a guy who's made platformers, Tim, what would you do? Oh, motion. Okay. What would you do to kind of change the platforming gameplay here? Is there anything? Is it is it bang on that the whole color stuff is enough? People are engaged. They're like, cool, that's different. You change colors, great. Everything else is ladders and and boulders and crates. You move. Do you think it needs anything else? You know, the movement feels really solid. Um, this, I can't say anything for the platformer stuff. This feels pretty solid. Like I, any kind of features that aren't here would just be my opinion and not like, <laughs> not necessarily yeah. improve the game. You know what I mean? But like, well, I understand that people who do YouTube videos often express their opinions. So, you know, have, have at it, my friend, don't hold back. Rick, we're doing a serious video. I can't give you an opinion. I, I would love, with all of the ledges and the vertical movement in this game, I would like some kind of, like, ledge grab or jump mm. or something. But I don't yeah. really feel like it needs it so far. Yeah. 
I like these characters, and the the spacing of the characters is good. Yeah. I guess what I'm getting, I'm not playing, I'm watching, and you know, when you watch, it's a little bit different. You you got to be careful not to just, um, whoa, that's cool, like zoomed out. I like this yeah. stuff. This is what I'm getting at. Some variety, something that that some wow moments. Oh, a new piece. Purple. Like that. Purple. Is that purple or is it pink or is it mauve? Looks pink on my monitor, but wow. One thing that I don't oh, you can make the get, like I get that, that it's got PC controls too. I just, I wish this snapped because I'm using the oh, thumbstick yeah. right now. I just wish it like it was mm. either this or this. It's kind of weird yeah. to like have full control. I bet the but... developer hearing that would be like, oh, I so wanted to put in snap, <laughs> but I ran out of time. Don't say that. Or the I snap tried was it, in but... from the beginning, but we changed it last minute. <laughs> <laughs> You know, people, yeah, people using a mouse cursor couldn't use it, so. Yeah, that, that, I mean, there's very, like, real reason for that. I keep yeah. getting emails and it's giving me anxiety. I don't want the emails. <laughs> it gives me flashbacks. <laughs> a, a note for viewers at home out there, if you're looking the to contact Tim, not through email. <laughs> don't. Please don't. It's the hardest color for our eyes to just, distinguish. Just send him a Twitter, a random now, Twitter. There we go. Uh -oh. Imagine a shade. Oh, that looks like it's One crashed. Step further. It's kind of weird how I can oh, no, jump on the my ladder. Screen a color beyond what we but, can actually okay. perceive. We call these impossible colors. Yeah. What I'm exploring as well is a little and bit I that as a this, developer, you're going to play your game well, a thousand design. million times. If and the concern and is that after a while, you're going to say, ah, this is too simple or too boring or too repetitive. I'm going to put more stuff sure in there. And it's that's a real art to know, a real skill to know, yeah. uh, you know, is, is it enough? Sorry, Do I have enough stuff in there? And in one of the best ways to, to know as you go through your development is to have people play it constantly and regularly. People that haven't played it before because... I guarantee you the guy guys people ladies who made this game would just smash through this so quickly they could do it with their eyes closed dun, 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 dun. and after a while you're gonna say is my game too easy do i need more you know complexity um I, you know yeah. that's the get people to play your game i guess is what i'm saying here. no I, cool. it, I literally went through that too because like that's what i was worried about for the philophobia launch was is the beginning just too like boring and like when other people play it it's just enough to keep them interested but when i play it it's like oh my god this is so but like i'm teaching them how to jump i'm teaching them what the enemies yeah. do i'm teaching them how to interact with the world so like a lot of this is necessary like i feel like i've learned like basically we've learned that colors affect the world right but like yeah. there are like probably a dozen minor little things that i've also learned that have to do with colors like Mm -hmm. uh, boulders can fall, things can happen, doors can open, like hidden things can be in the world. And now I want to check constantly in this black and white region to see like what the colors are. That's something the game yeah. didn't teach me, but I just kind of picked up. Um, yeah. So I can and go through I think if you, if you have some rules as you're making a game, for example, the rule might be uh, no, no consecutive 30 seconds of my game will be the same. So in other right. words, if the player's doing something for 30 seconds, the next 30 seconds has to be different to give variety. I'm a big fan of that. Make the game like different chop, 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 change, particularly a platformer. Ape Out was fantastic at that. What was, sorry? Ape Out was fantastic yeah. at that. It just kept yeah. changing stuff up. Well, All right, and then, and then you, maybe I can go through it. this. Oh, See, yeah, no. that's a, that's a that's new cool. thing. That's a cool moment, yep. Yeah, and that that moment came, you know, thirty seconds or a minute after the previous one. So even if you've been playing your own game right. that you've built over and over and over and over, you can ask yourself, you know, get out your your stopwatch. Was it thirty seconds to a minute between different things that happened in my game? And if it is, then you know, cool. You don't need to go and mess with it and try to add complexity. You're on the right track. This game too is using zoom and scaling of things to kind mm. of. Oh. <laughs> talking and controlling it don't drink and drive I can't do Tim. Both. <laughs> don't operate heavy machinery well <laughs> but it's using like you notice it's zooming out on the higher parts i don't know if you noticed but when we were scaling down yeah. the camera i was at the top of the camera not the not the bottom so it was showing me what was below me it's really making good use of camera placement and that's something that like yeah. if you do i'm gonna do this again aren't i i almost did it again i have to do this in midair switched oh oh it slows down that's nice at least yeah it yeah. gives you a slowdown that's really cool uh but but camera placement is something that like did you see the zoom out now and i'm yeah. at the bottom of the camera little things like that if done right you won't notice 
right? But yeah. it just makes the experience so much better. Like, we, I've played so know, many platformers that lock on the char character. Oh, gets, yeah, and it gets a bit stale, doesn't yeah. it? Do we, do we know what engine this was created in? I do not. Because uh, what you're showing here is really simple nowadays with Unity. I know you're, you're a, a Construct 2 guy, yeah? Construct uh, 3 now. Construct 3? Oh, look at you moving up in the world. Uh, but Unity, you get this really cheaply with the camera, just being able to change, you know, zoom it out a little bit, zoom it in. You can have it conditionally based. So, um, you know, if a particular thing's happening, then um, have the camera move in and out. So, yeah, if you're working in Unity, making a platformer, you've got no excuse to not be using some sort of nice camera flow in and out. Like just here, see how it moved in a little bit? And you can have it when the player starts to run, you know, when the player's moving, you can have it go yeah. out a little bit. And when the player's standing still, you have it zoom in a little bit. So you can have it conditionally based upon the state of the character of the player, which I think is super yeah. cool. One thing I love to do too, and this game doesn't seem to do it, but um, if I'm moving right, I like to put the camera a little bit that way. And I'm moving left, I like to put the camera a little bit that yep. way, just so you can see where you're headed. Yeah. But I mean, this is why I zoomed out, so I don't really need that here. Yeah, and another, that's cool. Another. You zoom out, you go up to this temple thing, and this is a cool moment. I like it. You, you have a little bit of a celebration moment. We're up to three. We're, we're three in 20 minutes so far. So, like, that's that's the pacing that I think yeah. is, is good because, like, okay, I'm starting to get... And and I think with, with the way that this game works, each color makes this exponentially more challenging, mm. right? Because yeah. now it's like, okay, now there's lots of crazy little ways I can switch this. Um, yeah. And if, if the awesomeness of the game comes when you've got tons of colors, then you don't want to drag that out too much. Right. You want the, the colors to happen pretty quickly. I bathed in an earthy orange light when I first met Dr. Gray. Summer had come and gone in a cold autumnal I'm kind of not. Me well, I guess you and I are chatting. If, you, if I was just playing the, the game on my own, I'd probably be listening to the papers. story a little bit more. When a cool breeze um, threatened to blow I, I like that you're still able to move while the story's happening. Escaped my reach yeah. It does feel a little bit forced, man, though. Much older than kind of like, it seems like they give me these long sections specifically to yeah. make me listen to it. I remember his gentle smile when he returned it. He started talking, and I was surprised that he had worked I don't know. my work I, in the university. I mean, chamber. opposed to like a cutscene that a lot of people would skip. That he hoped yeah. we could work together. I'm not really learning anything. I, and I wonder if this would get in the way so if I'm actually presented with a legit puzzle. You know, I'd be like, shut up! I'm trying to solve this. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, I think when it comes to story, all that stuff there. I know I was. We weren't really paying attention to it and skimming it. But it didn't feel like I needed to know that. It seemed like just pure exposition. Oh, you back to... I, I like this. I, I like it's that like I'm... It's like that. full circle, but like yeah. within 20 minutes, I now feel like a different person in the same spot. Yeah. Right? That's a really cool thing. The hero's journey. Look at you. Yeah. Within 20 minutes. Yeah. And now I feel like I want to explore the town a little bit more and see, hey, what can I... Yeah, that is cool. It's also reusable assets, which I'm a huge fan of. If yeah. this level's already been made once and you've placed all your assets, then make the player run back through there, but make them run through there feeling like the you know they've leveled up. Look at yeah. all the stuff you can do now. There's, I yeah, don't have pink, though. You've got a different relationship with the same environment, which is just such a lovely way to to get more out of the guy we saved. Assets. You got hey. something for me? Thanks so much for saving me. Those caves Welcome sure to my me. cramped house. Yeah. You're not going to give me anything? Hey, that's 10 gold at least. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned something from RPGs. Okay. And this one's this is purple. That bird's got a... If that bird Where? doesn't end up being like the final boss or god of the world or something, <laughs> gotta, he should be a colored bird so I can make him disappear. <laughs> okay, we can go. Can we go out the window? See, I keep checking. One of the things I would love mm. that maybe you know, this is just me as a game designer, but like, this is such a cool mechanic to hide stuff. Yeah, you know? and I would love to like just check this one time and like see a secret passage somewhere. I bet that'll happen though. I We're bet we're not it yet will. at the point. Yeah, I think I think later on. I don't think I'd be at the point just yet. I'd be frustrated if it was like in that room. I needed to turn it to to yellow. I didn't even think about that. But at some point, I can see us being trained that we need to do that. 
Okay, we don't have green Ooh, either. Green. We need some green. That's also a good way of saying come back here when you've yeah. leveled up to green. I've seen that twice so far. I'm gonna go for a swim. What happens if you jump in there? <laughs> so I was gonna test. <laughs> Who would have thought? Uh, oh, I saw him in the White and, House. Okay. And a lot of a lot of what we do in these reviews, and, and you know, if you're watching this, give us feedback on what you'd like to see. Maybe you'd like to see us playing in the second hour of the game. I, a lot of the reason that we're starting it up from scratch and playing from the first part of the game is that's where players more often than not make up their mind is this a good game do i like it am i going to tell people about it am i going to keep playing so you've got to hook someone in the first 10 15 20 minutes hence why we're you know we review the first 20 minutes of a game okay. and i think after playing this game i can see that personally i felt it was a little bit slow to start uh but now it's ramping up to the point where i can see dang this game's gonna have tons of complexity right so in hindsight the pacing was perfect for the start and i'm just sort of watching someone Dr. else play that's why i felt it was a little bit slow well, but how did you feel about the for me like I, I wouldn't consider myself a hardcore gamer so i like those games that are almost kind of like meditative and they don't require we discovered abnormal more. ridiculous Ever amounds of cognitive effort you know yep. so right. i've we really enjoyed this kind of pace we so right. far mm. um we work long hours and i always go into games a little critical because that's just how i've trained my brain as a game designer but like it's very this is like one of those games i could totally pop on a podcast and just kind of like zone out right yeah yeah I like okay, yeah, so we're now we're like starting to get environment art and oh, like yeah, chains cool. and they're making clinky sounds and they look cool. I yeah, nice. as look. This is amazing to me. I love this. There's like physics based chains. <laughs> That's just <laughs> delightful <laughs> to me. <laughs> Do you, think, do you think any players get there and be like, look at the physics on these chains, or is it just game developers are like, wow, where are their anchor points? And I wonder what sort of uh, settings they've got. Yeah, gravity. I just think about the pain in the ass it is to like make something like that. <laughs> oh. That is good, though. But players, as a player, I like to do that. You like to bump into yeah. things. You like the flowers to kind of move away as you run through them. Right. Th those little touches, it's the same mechanic or the same asset over and over it's the chains over and over and over but you put them in a lot of places and it's kind of fun to keep bouncing into the chains it's a good addition and it it came like so the environment art is starting to change slightly we've got the chains and we've got mm. the candles i don't think the candles were there before i could be wrong about that what happens if i change in the middle oh, i can't it won't let me okay oh, i was gonna say i can't that seems that would have been a technical <laughs> problem to I mean that's that's a great easy simple solution. Just don't let them. <laughs> yeah. Right. If over the top of the color, then don't yeah. snap. Sometimes the best solutions are the simple ones. Oh. See how close in the camera is now. Is do you hear anything with the music to support? You know, we're in close. So I want you to think more. It's a bit more dangerous. Uh, no, it's really chill. It's like piano, like ha happy type of. I don't know. I like yeah. it. It's it's very chill. Um, but it feels it feels a little bit um, more personal at the moment because the camera is zoomed in quite close. Yeah. So, you know, a, again that point. Oh, jeez. Um, again that point of variety, and and camera is a really in platformers. Camera is a really cheap way. I don't mean cheap as in you know, hey, put more effort in. But I, cheap as in from a scope production point of view, camera is a really um, affordable way effective way to get this sort of variety i like how these puzzles are getting they're not just one-off puzzles anymore they're getting yeah. they're requiring more and more colors yeah. and they're getting more and more complex which i like yeah that was really cool yeah again it's just the standard pushing blocks around but right. by layering on top of it the color mechanic it's super deep yeah yeah and then like one color can usually like for two blocks which is kind of cool I wonder if this will fall. It does. So it like takes it away from the world completely. What happens if you try to put the yellow back now? Hmm. It's there, but it's just it's not in front of it. Now it's red. That's interesting. <gasps> oh, that could be layer upon layer upon layer, couldn't it? When you get merging of colors. Yeah. I could see that in the future that you've got a color in your color wheel. Now we got that... a key. 
Oh, okay. Oh. See, Jeez. okay. The other, so the other the main thing, keys and doors. It's, yeah, it's pretty yeah. solid. Like it, it has. Like I can see as a developer, it being very, very difficult to figure out how much you give the player how quickly. But in hindsight, playing for what like thirty minutes now, uh, it's the pacing is on point. I've learned a new thing every couple minutes, like you were saying, and I feel. Um, I don't feel overwhelmed. I feel like I've gained quite a bit of knowledge, but I've gained it in little little bites to where it's it's pretty great. And like I don't feel intimidated by a puzzle like this. I know it's possible, and I know that I got to use this. It's I'm not like confused. I don't think I got to do a wall jump or a crazy like flip or something. You know, um, a lot of games. Like I said, if if you added a wall jump, like I recommended before, like maybe I might think, oh well, I got to do you know something else or or weird. I actually like yeah. how. I know this is what I got to do, right? This is my main mechanic. This is my thing. This is how I solve the puzzle. Because a lot of puzzle games, the mistake they make is like they'll... The players think they know how. And so they try the wrong way over and over and over again. And mm. I think the wrong choice should be blatantly obvious. And the... Um, you, you don't necessarily have to yeah, give well, a solution. Yeah, well, those right? walls are clearly too high. You can't... It says you cannot jump up here. Right. It, it Like if it were just above my head, I might keep trying to do that over and over again, you know? Yeah. And you know, it fits with the character as well. If you gave this character now, like, hey, you've got some special boots, uh, now you can do wall jump. It, it would, it feels like it would break the character a little bit. Yeah. The character's not a yeah. wall jump kind of guy. Yeah, no, I, I agree. So I, I think, given the experience that I went through over the last couple minutes, I, I think this is really solid. I, I enjoy this quite a bit. And, and so it pushes the orange block if orange but then it goes straight through it. So now you need to, yeah. So that's... That's great. I mean, that that mechanic there, that this one little screen with its puzzle, I think summarizes the game so well. Switch yeah. the colors, push things around, think about the relationship between the colors. Uh, and maybe we can summarize what we've learned from this game so far. The main thing I've learned is that it works really well, saying I've, I've got, in, in this game, we've got one new thing the color switching mechanic everything else we're just going to do platform just best practice platforming you jump you push crates around you have a key that open doors not trying to reinvent anything there not trying to give the player any more complexity than the player needs like we're talking about right. wall jump uh, the, the player doesn't need that the thing about this game is that one thing so again if you're at home working on a game or thinking about your game design just have one place you innovate everywhere else keep it best practice you don't need to go and do crazy other unusual weird platform right. type stuff just regular platform stuff is enough totally i agree with everything you said and i think like the simplicity is key to this because like i said the more mechanics you add to this the more confusing all of the puzzles become because there's mm. a bunch of things at my at my disposal right and i don't know what the right way is which most likely would lead to me doing the wrong thing over and over again thinking it's the right thing I think this game does it fantastic. The, the the platformer mechanics are not complex, and I think they're not complex on purpose because they're not the focus, right? The running yeah. and jumping is not, it's not like Super Meat Boy where like, or Philophobia, where like, you know, you, you need to master the run and jump to get it perfect. Yep. This game requires- That's not that where you, the skill is. Right. Yeah, the skill is not in jumping, the skill is in puzzle solving. Right, and I, I think that's a, that's a great way to approach it, right? Like whatever's not the focus, dumb it down to like its core it doesn't need to be yep. super complex like i think mark of ninja did that I, I remember hearing the developers say that they they had this crazy combat system in mark of ninja but mark of ninja was a stealth game and when you give somebody a, a massive combat system like that they want to go fight they don't want to <laughs> hide in the shadows right so they had to remove yeah. a lot of that and i think that applies yeah. here so i think what makes this work is a unique aesthetic as always and um the pacing is fantastic and the mechanic is really interesting and really deep yeah, I'd add to that as well. The thing that we're picking when we're reviewing games to uh, to say, does it work or not? Is it a good game? We're trying to find games that have one thing that stands out, one innovation, one bit that's remarkable, one feature that uh, has a standout from the rest. And I think the color switching mechanic here is that feature. It works really well. I agree. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. If you want to see us uh, talk about a game, what makes it work, leave it down below in the comments and let us know your thoughts. Uh, if you're on my channel, head on over to Rick's channel and check out. If you're on out. my channel, check out Tim's channel. And uh, we will see you in the next video. Bye, everybody. Okay, see ya.